Hi everyone, it's Laura Volpez for Studio Katia, and in today's video I'm going to share with you how to create an elegant birthday card using the no line watercolor technique. To paint in my images today, I will be using my Ganzai Tambi watercolors, and I started by activating the paints with some water, so I spritzed some water in the pans that I picked. And then I'm going to pick up the color and put it down on my plastic palette because there I can either mix the colors or dilute them as much as I need. And then I could start stamping my image. This here is from the Kind Bouquet stamp set by Studio Katia and I am stamping it on some watercolor cardstock using a no line ink. So this ink is very light and I think you can barely see the images right now, but that's kind of the point because by the end of the painting, we don't want to have any sharp edges, but we want to create our lines basically by means of shading the images. The technique I'm going to use to paint in the flowers is the wet on dry technique. This means that I'm not going to wet the paper prior to adding the pigments, but I'm going to come in with the pigments, I'm going to lay them down where I think the shadows will be, in this case at the base and at the tip of the petals, and then I'm going to come with a paintbrush loaded with clean clear water, and I'm going to blend out my watercolor to create a nice gradient. I started by adding my pink color and then I also dropped in one of the two yellows that I have on my palette to create a little bit of color variation and interest on my petals. And then I moved on and started painting another area on my image while that first one was drying. And I'm paying attention not to paint two adjacent areas right after each other because that will cause some bleeding and migration of the pigments between the two areas and will ruin my shading. I kept painting the flower and I'm using a larger or a smaller brush to put down my pigments depending on how large an area I'm painting because I want to have enough control over the watercolor. And this is also why I chose the dry on wet technique over the wet on wet technique. In case you're not familiar with it, when you use the wet on wet technique, you start by wetting the area that you want to paint with clean clear water, and then you drop in your pigments and let the water move them. And this creates some very nice and organic looks, but for this painting here, I wanted to have some more control. So I started by adding my paints to the dry paper and then I just blended them out myself with a wet paintbrush. And this way again, I felt I had a little bit more control over how the shading was going to look in the end. To make sure that you have enough variation in your shading, you need to make sure that there is no paint left in your paintbrush once you go ahead and blend out your pigments. So what I do is I lay down my watercolor, then I rinse off my brush in the one of the jars that I have on my desk, I dry the brush and then I pick up the clean clear water from the second jar and with that I blend out the pigments. Also, if you find it a little bit difficult to figure out exactly where the lines in your stamped image are because of the fade ink that we used for our no line water coloring, it can be useful to have the stamp packaging next to you or an image of the stamp anyway that you can use as a reference so that you know always where you have to add your shadows and exactly where the edges of your images are. Once I was done painting the flower, I moved on and started working on the leaf. I started by adding my watercolor to the base of the leaf and to its center, and then I blended that out with a paintbrush loaded with clean water. In order to get some color variation in the leaf too, I'm going to drop in some yellow paint to the tip of the leaf and make sure that it's nicely blended with the rest of the pigments I have there. 
I went ahead and off camera I painted the rest of the flowers using the same colors that I used on the first one. I still have the footage so if you would like to see a speed painting of these flowers so that you can see the whole painting process just let me know in the comments down below. But what I'm doing now is I am adding a second layer of color to intensify the shadows and get even more contrast on my images. And in order to create my shadow tone, I mixed in the pink color that I used to originally paint the flowers with just a little tiny drop of that green I used on the leaves. Mixing in complementary colors is a good way to create shadow tones for your images. But you just need to be careful not to add in too much of the complementary color to the one you want to shade, otherwise you will end up with a muddy result. So in the same way as I did for the flowers, in order to create a shadow tone for my leaves, I mixed in a little bit of that pink to the green that I had previously used to paint in the leaves. And then using a very small paintbrush, I added in a second layer of color, trying to get a little bit more contrast. And because now there is a tiny little bit of green in those flowers and a tiny little bit of pink in the leaves, the whole painting will be even more cohesive. At this point, I left my flowers aside to dry and I started working on my background. I created a very quick background by dropping in the same colors that I used to paint in the flowers on a panel of watercolor cardstock that I had previously wet with some clean water. As you can see, I am not doing anything really specific, I am just adding in the colors here and there. The dominating color is the yellow that I have on my palette and then I also dropped in a little bit of the pink and a little bit of the green and then I sped up the drying process with my heat tool. In order to create a little bit more interest I am also going to add some droplets to that same background again using the colors that I used for the flowers and this way everything would look nice and like it belongs together. The cardstock is pretty warped at the moment but I fixed it by running it through my die cutting machine, sandwiching it between some copy paper in order to protect the panel. And then I decided to add a little bit more detail using a stencil and my distress oxides. The stencil that I used is called Brush Stroke Waves Stencil and it's also by Studio Katia. And I'm blending some Distress Oxide in Antique Linen over the stencil, but I'm not covering the entire surface because I want to add just a bit of detail here and there on my panel. I then decided that I wanted to have a couple of layers of cardstock on my background. So I took some more watercolor cardstock that I had previously used to try and create the background for my card but that I ruined because I added too much water and I blended some Distress Oxide in aged mahogany and in tattered rose only on the edges because those are the only ones which will show through. This panel here was die cut with the Studio Katia Darling Ribbon and Dotted Frames dies. And then I used the Scalloped Rectangle in the Scallop Hearts Cover die, also by Studio Katia, to die cut my other watercolor panel. And then I could go ahead and start assembling my card. I'm using double-sided adhesive to adhere these two layers to each other because this will help me flatten them out. I did run this panel here through my die cutting machine in order to reduce warping, but because it wasn't removed 100%, I decided to use some strong adhesive so that I'm sure that my card in the end is nice and flat. I'm also going to use the same double-sided tape to adhere my flowers to the front of my card and off-camera I also die-cut them with the coordinating dies to the Studio Katia Kind Bouquet stamp set. 
I glued the flowers to the bottom left portion of my card because I want to be stamping my sentiment on the top right of the card. I'm using these birthday wishes from the Studio Katia Blooming Bunch stamp set. And I'm stamping it with Distress Oxide in Vintage Photo because I felt that a brown ink would match the feel of the card better than a black one. And then at this point, all that was left to do was to mount my card front onto my card base. This is some white heavyweight cardstock cut at four and a quarter by 11 inches and scored at five and a half inches. And this is the finished result. And that's it for today. I really hope you enjoyed this video and I hope I inspired you to create with the Studio Katia Kind Bouquet stamp set. Don't forget to subscribe for more inspiration. Thank you all so much for stopping by and have a great day.